Your regular homework problems due on Friday are going to be more about optimization from section 4.3. These are applied optimization problems. This one, for example, is pretty similar, if you look at the formula there, to the example we just did. It's related to an example in the book. I think I might go ahead and assign this one. Differentiate it, set the derivative equal to zero, and solve for x in a pretty similar way that we did. It's trying to minimize <clears throat> the time to walk to a bus stop based on a certain example in the book. Other examples involve costs, like if you turn the page, here's an example that involves a cost that you're trying to minimize. There are many geometrically oriented problems, and those are usually the simplest to think about. Let's go ahead and work on maybe a couple of these problems here, except I think I'll change this number just so I don't get the exact same answer if I do assign these problems. So this is about solids three-dimensional solids, and you're trying to find the dimensions that give minimum surface area, given that the volume is something fixed. You're trying to minimize the surface area for a fixed volume. It's a pretty common kind of application. If you think about it, you could, for example, try to apply this to cans of soup, for example. You might want to minimize the cost of the soup can, soup can by minimizing its surface area for a fixed volume of soup. Now, there are other complications that come into play in actually putting the can together that make that a bit too simplistic. But that would be a hint of a possible kind of application of something like this. Let's go ahead and mimic what we would do with these first three problems. First case, where the solid is a closed box. Second case, where the solid is an open box, where the top is open, so you don't include that as part of the surface area. And third case, we'll look at a cylinder. So let's think about a closed box first. of a fixed volume. To keep things simple, we also assume the base of the box is a square. If you don't think that assumption, it makes the problem extra complicated. Let's call the side lengths along the base x on all four sides. The base is a square. It's not necessarily a cube shape, though. The height could be different than x. Although maybe when we minimize the, the uh, surface area, maybe h ends up equaling x. I don't know. We'll see. If that's the case, then a closed box with minimum surface area is going to be a, a cube shape, a perfect cube. Set the volume equal to some fixed number. Again, in the book's problems, it says 8 cubic centimeters. Let me pick something different. Say 20 cubic centimeters. So it's very similar to problems 6, 7, and 8, but I'm just changing this number. This is called a constraint. Because it does put constraints on what x and h can be. They can't be any old numbers. And in fact, if you think about it, since the volume of a box like this would be x times x times h, x squared times h has to equal 20. The values of x and h can't be anything. They have to be chosen such that x squared times h is 20, though there's lots of things to choose for x and h where that would be true. For example, if x was square root of 20 and h was 1, that would work. If x was 1 and h was 20, that would work. And there's infinitely many other things you can pick for x and h that make the volume 20. 
This is not the thing we're trying to minimize. If you look at the directions, it says minimize the surface area. That's sometimes called the objective function. Our objective, our goal, is to minimize the objective function. I'll just call it f of x here. Well, okay, let's write it this way here. The surface area which initially has formula that involves both x and h, right? Look at the box. The area of the base is x squared. The area of the top is x squared. What's the area of each side? x times h. And there's four such sides. So the surface area of this box is 2x squared plus 4xh. If the box didn't have a top to it, how would this change? If the box did not have a top. Just a plain x squared, not a 2x squared, yeah. And that will affect the answer, but let's see how this plays out. You might call this a function of two variables, x and h, but x and h are constrained to satisfy that equation. So because of that, I can solve that constraint for, for example, h in terms of x by dividing both sides by x squared, substitute that in here for h, and that's going to give me a function of just one variable. s can be written as a function of x, 2x squared plus 4xh, 4x times this, 4 times 20 is 80, x times 1 over x squared is the same as x divided by x squared, is 1 over x, right? This is 80 over x. That x right there will cancel with one of the x's here. So this is my objective function that I want to minimize. What's my, mo my domain for this? Well, certainly x can't be negative. It's a length. It's got to be positive. Is there an upper bound on how big x can be? x also can't be 0 because then you'd have no box. Is there an upper bound on how big x could be? No, there's not. If x, x could be really, really huge and still have volume equal to 20 cubic centimeters, h would have to be really, really tiny if x is really huge. You can have a really super thin box. Of course, in real life, there are practical constraints like how big are your atoms, for example, right? There are practical constraints. But in the mathematics here, the modeling, x can be any positive number. Not a closed and bounded domain, so we're not going to have endpoints to check. We're going to just take the derivative, set it equal to 0, solve for x, and hope, maybe based on a graph, maybe based on some sort of test, that it will be a minimum. So yeah, now find the derivative, ds dx, or f prime of x, would be 4x. Do I need the quotient rule here? I actually could avoid it. How should I write that expression if I want to avoid the quotient rule? What power of x? Go ahead. Negative one. Negative one, yeah. That helps me avoid the quotient rule. So this is 4x minus 80 over x squared. Set this equal to 0 and solve for x. Once again, maybe you want to put this term on the other side with a positive sign. 4x equals 80 over x squared. 
multiply both sides by x squared and divide both sides by 4, you get x cubed as 20. So it looks like x is the cube root of 20. Is your critical point. Twenty to the one third power. Approximately two point seven one four four centimeters. Are we done? It says find the dimensions giving the minimum surface area. We found X, we need to find H still. We need to know what the height is. That's easy. Just use this equation again. H is going to be 20 over x squared. 20 over 20 to the 1 third squared. 20 over 20 to the 2 thirds. And that's the same if you think of 20 as being to the first power up there as 20 to the 1 third. Ah, hey, cube root of 20 again. It's a cube. It's going to be a cube where all the sides have the same length that minimizes the surface area when it's a closed box. Is it really a minimum? If you graph this function with your calculator, you will see it does look like a minimum. You'll get a graph something like that. Cube root of 20 for x. And the minimum volume, which we have not found, or the minimum surface area, which we have not found, you would get by plugging that into the function. I'm not going to bother. The surface area minimum. I'll just call it S min. If you were asked for the minimum surface area, you'd want to plug this number into the function. And you'd want to then approximate that minimum surface area. if you think about it, it should be uh, 6 times 20 to the 2 thirds is what it should be. Because the 6 sides are all squares of side length 20 to the 1 third. I think the minimum surface area is about 44.2. You could double check that. Square centimeters. Is there a way to confirm this with calculus, that the graph really does look like this and say doesn't come back down again? How do you know it doesn't come back down again? I mean, after all, you're always making finite windows. You could think about the derivative and how it changes sign. I think it might be a little easier to think about the second derivative. F double prime of x, differentiate this, you'll get 4 plus 160x to the negative 3, 4 plus 160 over x cubed. And while the second derivative test tells you to plug a critical point into this and see if the second derivative is positive or negative at the critical point to see whether you have a min or a max, we also can think about this for all positive x and say, hey, this is positive if x is positive. In other words, the graph is always concave up when x is positive. There's no way it can come back down again. And that would be good enough for us to know this is going to be not just a local minimum, but actually a global minimum for positive values of x. It really is minimizing the surface area. Can I clarify anything there? What would happen if we were thinking about the open box? We said this formula changes to just having an x squared there instead of a 2x squared. Let's get Mathematica to do it quickly here. My function in that case would be f of x equals 
not a 2x squared, but just a plain x squared, plus 80 over x. f prime of x is this. Set that equal to 0 and solve for x. You could do that with this syntax. And uh, we want reals. And let's just go ahead and, well, let's just go ahead and do n solve. About 3.42 for the value of x, that's going to be the critical point here. Cube root of 20, remember, was 2.7144. That's the dimension of each side of the box when the top is included to minimize surface area. When the top's not included, it looks like x needs to be about 3.42, which means h will not be the same as x in this case. H is still 20 over x squared. H is about 1.71. So when the box doesn't have a top, and we're trying to minimize the surface area, so we're not including the top, x is bigger than h. The box is going to have to be not as tall as it is wide to minimize the surface area if it's an open box like that. Okay, but the idea is the same. You still use your constraint to solve for, in this case, h in terms of x, substitute into, in this case, the surface area function to get a function just of x that we can use single variable calculus for, take the derivative, set it equal to zero, solve for x, Check that you really are getting a minimum. Instead of doing a cylinder, let's do another type of problem where instead of the volume being fixed and we're trying to minimize the surface area, maybe we should do the surface area to be fixed and try to maximize the volume. Should we try that, see how it goes? It's not one of the homework problems. But I, I could, there could be one like this. It's not one of those problems six, seven, or eight. Let's do it for a box again, where the base is once again a square. And the height is unknown. This time, let's make our constraint be for surface area. Constraint is that the surface area, which is 2x squared plus 4xh, just like before, this is the surface area, is fixed. Not sure how well this is going to work out, but let's just see what happens. Let's go ahead and make this fixed to be 20 square centimeters. In the other problem, the volume was fixed at 20 cubic centimeters. Here I'm fixing the surface area to be 20 square centimeters. And our objective now, I hope it makes intuitive sense that instead of trying to minimize surface area, we should try to maximize volume. Maximize the volume, which is x squared times h. Not sure how well this is going to work out, but let's try it. Do the same kind of thing. Take your constraint and solve for, yeah, again, h in terms of x. Subtract 2x squared from both sides. Then divide both sides by 4x. Now substitute that into the volume function. And let's just see what happens. So when we do that, these arrows indicate the steps. I'm plugging that into the volume function. Then I'm going to get a volume as a function of x. That'll be x squared times h, which is this. 20 minus 2x squared over 4x. X does need to be positive, because otherwise we don't have a box. 
So I'm not dividing by zero. I can cancel one of the x's. I can write this as x times, in parentheses, 20 over 4 is 5. 2 over 4 is 1 half, minus 1 half x squared. Looks like I need, I've got a cubic here that I'm trying to minimize. And it's actually going to put a cons an extra constraint on things. X cannot be arbitrarily large. Even if H is small, 2X squared, if X gets large, will get, it by itself get bigger than 20 square centimeters. Even if H is small. So while when we tried to minimize surface area, x could be arbitrarily large. Here in maximizing the volume based on a fixed surface area, x cannot be arbitrarily large. This quantity does need to be positive. And in fact, if you graph this function, you can think about graphing it this way. I mean, it's a, it's a cubic. And it's got roots at zero and, well, whenever, wherever this is zero, which would be plus or minus square root of 10. You do that in your head. Set this equal to zero and solve for x. You'll get plus or minus square root of 10, which is close to plus or minus 3. The graph is going to look something like this for all x. But the part we care about is this part, when x is positive but not too big. That spot right there will be square root of 10, is what that'll be. Plug square root of 10 in here. Square root of 10 squared is 10, times a half is 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. Question? Oh, thanks. That's a mistake. But as far as finding that x-intercept, I can still think about this one. Looks like there is going to be a maximum. There's going to be some value of x, probably a little to the right of the halfway point, somewhere right around here, that's going to give you a maximum. That's my guess. We'll see what happens. Go ahead and differentiate f prime of x. Differentiate that formula right there. Gives you 5 minus 3 halves x squared. Set that equal to 0. Solve for x. You get 5 equals 3 halves x squared. So x squared is 5 times 2 thirds. That'll be 10 thirds. Solutions of that are plus or minus square root of 10 thirds. We're after the positive one. Positive square root of 10 thirds. 10 thirds is 3.3 repeating. Take the square root of that. It's about 1.8257 centimeters. Again, square root of 10 is just a little bit bigger than 3. Yeah, this number, close to 1.8257, is more than halfway from 0 to square root of 10. This graph is not perfectly symmetric about a vertical line through its peak. It's a bit skewed. I didn't really draw it that way. That's what I expected to happen with a cubic like that. Is it really a maximum? Well, it certainly looks like it is for the graph. Again, we only care about this piece. You can take the second derivative again. And note that the second derivative, which would be negative 3x, is negative if x is positive. So for all positive values of x, this graph is concave down.
yeah, it's going to be not only a local min, but actually a global min. I'm, I'm ignoring the part where x is negative. I'm also technically ignoring the part where x is exactly equal to 0 and exactly equal to the square root of 10, because then you wouldn't have a box. So it's really, I'm just looking for the maximum really over an open interval this, this time. I don't need to check the endpoints. They're not really part of the domain, because then you have no box if x is 0 or if h is 0. Any other mistakes? Does it look good? Let's try one more. Let's try a cylinder. And once again, we can either minimize surface area for a given volume, or we could try to maximize air, uh, volume for a given surface area. either minimize surface area for a given volume or maximize volume for a given surface area. Same kind of thing as with the boxes. Let's minimize surface area. Let's say the volume is fixed to once again be 20 cubic centimeters. But what's the volume of a cylinder if that's the radius and this is the height, what's the formula for the volume of the cylinder? It involves that magical number, pi, pi r squared, what else? Times h. The area of the circle on the bottom times the height does give you the volume. That's my constraint. My objective function is to minimize, my objective is to minimize the surface area. I could also think of this as what's called an objective function. Oh, what's the surface area? Um, well, you've got two pieces of surface area from the top and the bottom, right? Two circles. With both area have pi r squared, so you'd have 2 pi r squared. Plus the area around the sides. You could imagine taking the scissors and cutting this up a side and unrolling it. What would it look like if you did that? A rectangle of area base times height. The height would be h. What would the base be? It's related to r and pi. Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Yeah. Pi times the diameter is the same as 2 pi times the radius. 2 pi r times h. Once again, we can solve the constraint for h in terms of r and substitute so that we get a function of just one variable. I think for sake of time, I'll have Mathematica do the calculations for us again. In this second term, when you multiply this times this, think about what cancels. The pi's cancel. And one of the r's cancels. And 2 times 20 is 40. Looks like you're going to get 40 over r after cancellation. r must be positive. Okay, so that would be the function to take the derivative of. There's the derivative, set it equal to 0, solve for r. It's not that much different than the box one, is it? Except for the pi in there. 
pretty similar kind of technique here. Our turns about to be about 1.47101 centimeters. Is it a minimum? You'd have to graph it or use the second derivative to check that it's concave up. It, it will be. It will once again look about like this. It's not a parabola. I'm making it a bit more long, elongated over here. You would get a minimum when R is about 1.47101 centimeters. Is H the same as R in this case? Solve for H. Plug in R into there. 20 over pi R squared. 20 over pi times 1.47101 squared. It is not equal to R, but hey, it looks like it's probably double, or very close at least. Interesting that it's so close but not exact. Maybe because I was rounding this one. I'm thinking because of rounding, it, it looks like it's a little off from being double the value of r. But I'm thinking it probably is exactly double the value of r is my guess. It's just because of rounding that it's a little bit off there. So to minimize the surface area for a given volume, it looks like the height needs to be twice the radius, which means the height would be the diameter. The height and diameter would be the same. Hey, that, that makes intuitive sense. That's kind of nice, right? Because twice the radius would be the diameter. So while not, while not being a cube, the radius, well, the diameter and the height would be the same to minimize the surface area for a given volume. Feeling like, like you can do this? These are pretty good examples to think about, I think. Let's try another kind of example. <clears throat> Let's try number 10 here. Find the value of x maximizing the shaded area. One vertex, this black dot evidently is on the graph of that function. Now that, that function looks kind of straight, but it does have a bit of curvature to it. It's not a straight line. I'll probably assign number 11. So let's work through number 10 and I'll give you a little hint about number 11. So again, this function here is f of x equals 1 third x squared minus 50x plus 1,000. We're trying to find the value of x that maximizes this area. Different x's do give you different regions, different rectangles. If x is over here, then the rectangle looks like that. If x is right here, then the rectangle looks like this. If x is way over here, the rectangle looks like that, etc. All you're requiring is for that upper right corner to be on the graph of f. The fact that the upper right corner is on the graph of f is kind of like your constraint. Your objective is to minimize, or maximize, excuse me, maximize the area. Any way you look at it, it's a rectangle of base equal to x and height equal to f of x, right? Because this point is on the graph of f of x. x times f of x. That's the function I've got to ma maximize. 
X goes between 0 and 20. That's a constraint. That's given in the problem. And if you multiply f of x by x, you get 1 third x cubed minus 50 x squared plus 1,000 x. That's the function we want to maximize over this. Now, that is a closed and bounded interval with the left endpoint A equal to 0 and the right endpoint B equal to 20. We may need to check the endpoints here. That makes sense? Like you were doing for today's assignment? Checking the endpoints? So let's give this function a name. Let's call it g of x, g prime of x. Take the derivative, you get x squared minus 100x plus 1,000. Set that equal to 0 and solve for x. See how far we can get without a calculator here. We can use the quadratic formula. Is that the best thing to do? Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to factor that. 100 plus or minus square root of 100 squared is 10,000 minus 4 times 1 times 1,000 is minus 4,000 over 2 times 1. That's just the quadratic formula that I used. A is the coefficient of x squared. That's 1. B is the coefficient of x. That's negative 100. C is 1,000. That's the constant term. I use the quadratic formula. This thing under the square root is 6,000. Yeah, I don't, 6,000 is not a perfect square. Square root of 6,000 is about 77.46. So we get approximately, um, well, 100 over 2 is 50, plus or minus square root of 6,000 over 2, 38.73 approximately. The smaller one of those is going to be 11.27 and the larger one is going to be um, 88.73. But only one of those is in the interval from 0 to 20. There's our interval. That's the only one that's in that interval. We're trying to maximize the product. We're trying to maximize g. Do we get a maximum? Well, you could graph it. You could graph this function. You could also just try the second derivative test. You could also, just as far as finding a global maximum, you could check plugging this number into the function and also check plugging the endpoints in. In fact, when you plug in 0, you definitely get 0 not a maximum. What happens if you plug in 20 into g, this function, this cubic here? 20 cubed divided by 3 minus 50 times 20 squared plus 1,000 times 20 is plus 20,000. Looks like the area is about 2667. What if we plug 11.27 in for x? 11.27 cubed divided by 3 minus 50 times 11.27 squared plus 1,000 plus 1,000 times 11.27. Looks like it's your maximum, about 5396.5. And that actually is good enough. You don't have to use the first or second derivative test. When you have the closed interval and you're after a global maximum, just check the function values at the endpoints and at the critical points in the interval. If the 11.27 one gives you a maximum, the graph. I believe is going to look something about like this over the interval from 0 to 20. This is the graph of g of x, which represents that area we're trying to maximize. Got a maximum here at 11.27. This is not a perfect drawing.
For your homework, I'm going to assign number 11. It's the same f of x function, but now you're trying to maximize the area of a triangle. So how does it change? Well, the area of a square is base times height. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. The base is still x. Well, excuse me, the base is, oh, it's a little trickier. The base is 20. That's fixed. The height is f of x. Looks to me you'll have 1 half times 20 times f of x, and that'll be the function to try to maximize. Okay? Where f of x is, again, this function right there. It might, the maximum might occur at the endpoints, x is 0 or x is 20. That might happen. Okay? Have a good day. We'll see you on Friday.